We're gonna talk taxes, some history here, and maybe just a general discussion that I'm happy to, I don't know if I can say necessarily jump knees deep in, debatable wise in the comment section because there's a lot of stuff going on in my life, but I'll read all comments. But I do wanna just go over this because in a previous video I did where I talked about you know, what I perceive to be some problems with socialism, more so, you know, how do you fund, how do you continue to pay for socialism? You know, this topic comes up and it's, it's a very popular talking point uh, that you'll hear in your discussion if you were to ever talk with somebody that uh, believes in socialism or, or, or what have you. And I just wanna give you my thoughts on it. I don't know if they're necessarily right, but I, I do think they're rational. I, I do think they're plausible. And that way you, if you stumble across somebody, you know, you can maybe throw this scenario at them and give them something to, I, don't, I'm, I can't say that they'll agree with it, but at, at least they wouldn't be able to accuse you of being like, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, okay, you know, I, I can respect your thought process there. I still disagree with it, but at least you'll, I would assume, find common ground in the, in the form of, all right, you, you've put together uh, a structured, rational thought. You're not just randomly making stuff up. You're not just, you know, ran, throwing out random, you know, insults or anything. It's actually a coherent, you know, thought process to, to go with. But the whole idea here is, and you saw from the title, well, you know, Tax rates used to be at 90%. You know, back in the 1940s, 50s, they were up at 90%. And to be fair, I actually, I think a couple people somehow think that that's what created a bunch of economic boom because yeah, there, there was a lot of good stuff going on in the economy back then. Um, and But I also realize that I don't think a lot of people are saying, so therefore, let, let's make tax rates 90% again. They're, they're not saying that. But what is being implied is they're using it as some sort of baseline to say, yeah, so you can jack up tax rates quite a bit more and everything's still going to be fine because they used to be at 90% and the economy was booming. Everything was great. And we're not and we're not even saying 90%. So if they used to be at 90 and things were great, I mean, why can't we jack them up to you know some sort of much higher amount? And they're using that as their baseline. But my problem with that and what I think needs to be considered and why it's a very, very, uh, it's not wrong, right? So it's not like they're lying. It is a fact, but we need some additional context here. In fact, right now I'm gonna put up a screen on the, uh, or an image on the screen and you're gonna see that, you know, it started off when you look at, at the far left. Yeah, tax rates were up there in 90%, but you're gonna see all those different lines. So they're the income, marginal, uh, you know, business, the various taxes, but you'll notice that as you go further into the future, right? So you move to the right and get more towards present day, you'll know that all those lines keep creeping lower and lower and lower and lower. And if you're watching this uh, at my site, claytrade.com, we'll put that image down below the, the video itself so you can take a closer look at it there. Uh, but basically for me to convey what I wanna get across is, so we had tax rate over here, which is what you were just saying. And then down here you have time. And then, Right here, you have tax rates, essentially. Now, I realize it wasn't a steady ground uh, move like this, but for illustration point, they dropped and dropped and dropped. Now, right here, the point where they were at 90%, the year 19, I think, 40s to 1950. So let's, let's jump back into history real quick and what had happened in the 1940s and then in 1950, like what, what was going on? Well, it was... World War II had ended. And as sad as this is, when I make this next comment, it's not like exaggerating. Like quite literally, the world had been blown to shreds. Blown to shreds. Every, just blown to shreds except two, except basically the United States. So at that point, in a very literal sense, the United States had a monopoly on production power. There was, again, sadly, zero competition because everybody else factories had been blown and bombed and you know, the United States was exporting stuff like crazy to all these, you know, to, the, to the allies. And there was no competition. So at this point, yeah, that, that, that's true. Tax rates were way, way up there. And yeah, that's true. The economy w w was strong, was doing well, but there's that asterisk of, well, yeah, but what was the result of World War II? A monopoly. Right, a monopoly on production power. I mean, we were a great industrial country then, just because well, there wasn't any sort of, uh, you know, there wasn't any sort of competition. Again, I, I suppose you can disagree with that, but in my mind, that that seems a very rational reason to why tax rates were able to get that high right after World War II. But again, they start to decrease and decrease. So the question becomes, well, let's use blue for this. D during this time. What, what was also going on? So 
let's let's globalization. So globalization, right? As time went further, the world economy got back online, got more back online. And the world economy, again, to use the, the fancy term, has become globalized that much more. And every single year, the world, the economy gets that much more globalized. So as time went on, globalization went up like that. Now, another term for globalization would be this. Competition, right? The more people that are getting involved in something, the more competitive it gets. And at this point, basically zero competition, right? But yeah, competition grew and grew and grew and tax rates have been going down and down and down. So my thought process is, well, the reason why tax prices or tax rates have gone down is because, well, the United States, we've got to stay competitive. You've got to stay somehow, you know, you got to make it attractive to still want to do business in America. And one way to do that is, well, you got to bring down tax rates. You can't have 90%. Now, again, I realize the vast majority of people are not saying that the economy was booming because of 90% tax rates. But I mean, for those people that do think that, my question to you would be, so if that was the case, well, then why don't we just jack tax rates up to like 99% right now? Because according to that logic, then we'll be like a, an a super, super, super power if we jack rates up to 99%. Again, the vast majority of people are not saying that the economy was great because of 90% tax rates. They're just saying, hey, 90% tax rates, it, it's been around before and it didn't cause massive problems. In fact, it was a good, you know, the economy was still good. But that's where I'm coming from as well, yeah, but you gotta factor in these other things. However, now that globalization is increasing, my point here is I don't, I don't think it's as straightforward as, hey, you know what? Just jack up tax rates, increase them a whole lot more because you know what? They used to be that way. Yeah, but yeah, when they were that way, globalization was so much smaller. And at this point, it's so competitive out there that you gotta be very, very careful. Again, have I done the research to know at what tax rate things start to break and bend? I don't know about that, but just kind of these general statements that I see people make is it's kind of like, okay, well, that's a little apple and oranges. So the next time if you're ever having a debate where somebody, or just not necessarily a debate, but just a discussion, maybe you see something online and somebody's bringing up these whole 90% tax rates. Well, now you have a bit more context of uh, probably why that is the way it is and why it's kind of apples and not kind of, it definitely is apples and oranges uh, you know, in, in today's globalized economy. So 90% tax rates, would it work today? I, I, no, I don't think so. I think that if you jacked up tax rates, not even to 90%, but if you jacked up tax rates to some of these levels that I'm, I'm seeing out there, I think people are just gonna be like, well, I'm gonna move my capital elsewhere because there's plenty of other options. There's plenty of other choices where I can go put my capital. And it's not like here where the world's been blown to shreds and there's nothing else that can really be done. No, no, no. I, I can move my capital to a, a variety of places. And when you have that, well then, sure, if tax rates may be at you know, 50, 60, whatever they are, but if there's no money to tax because that money has moved offshore, well then, you know, it's kind of a problem. So that's my thoughts on it. And just want to kind of throw that out there. Maybe you completely disagree with this premise. I, I, like you said, I, I don't know. Um, I think it's a very rational thought process to have and a very realistic uh, reason why it's kind of an apples and oranges discussion. But I want to give my thoughts on it because like I said in that previous video, once again, this whole 90% tax rate and talking point comes up. And in my mind, it's a little, and I'm not saying they're doing it maliciously. I just think it's a little deceiving when you don't factor in the historical context of you know what was going on in the world at that point in time and then what's gone on in the world since that point in time with globalization increasing, which is just another term for competition. So those are my thoughts. If you have any disagreements, agreements, other comments, feedback, put them down in the comment section. Like I said, I can't promise that I'm gonna engage in some sort of big old debate with you. I might have to just give you a, a thanks for your thoughts thing, but it's nothing personal, just a matter of I got a lot of other stuff going on, so I need to go and I need to be wise with my time. But I will still read comments, no doubt about that. So thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this at least gets some wheels turning in your mind. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. 
I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.